Freedom never dies, I say. Freedom never dies. No bomb can kill the dreams I hold. For freedom never dies. It's time to exhale and be motivated. Annie's Book House. Hey Annie's crew, happy Black History Month and welcome to part three of my discovery of Black history in America. I remember singing a song in college that now means more to me than it did when I sang it. The song is about the murder of Harry T. Moore. I decided to do my deep dive today on him because his name isn't a popular name we hear during Black History Month. Harry Tyson Moore was born in Houston, Florida. I did not just make a mistake, there is a Houston in Florida. <laughs> I thought I was reading wrong when I first looked it up too. Okay, so he was born in Houston, Florida. He was an only child and his dad died when he was only nine years old. His mom tried to manage things without his father, but it was just too much for her. So she sent him to live with one of her sisters in Daytona Beach, Florida. He stayed there for about a year and then he moved to Jacksonville, Florida. There, there was a very strong African-American community and um, they were informed, they were educated, just an amazing group of people that he was surrounded by. He stayed there for about three years and then went back home to finish high school. He's recorded to have only gotten one B plus in his entire high school period. He was a straight A student besides that one B plus. He went on to Florida Memorial College and graduated at age 19 and then became a fourth grade teacher. Fast forward his story, it's 1934 and a 24-year-old Harry Moore joins the NAACP. NAACP stands for National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. Now in 1937, he filed a huge lawsuit for equal pay for black and white teachers. He lost the case, but it was just the beginning because what the case did was ignite the fire in others. So lawsuits started to be filed left, right, and center, and eventually the salaries were equalized. Now in 1943, Moore decided to tackle on an even more dangerous issue, lynching and police brutality. And let me just interject right here. It's disgusting sad, appalling, frustrating that in 2021, this is still a topic. Anyway, in 1946, Harry T. Moore and his wife, who I, I didn't mention much about her, but she was an amazing educator herself. Well, they both lost their jobs because of their political activism. That didn't stop Harry though. With the losing of his job, he went full throttle ahead with the NAACP. In his first two years in full-time work with the NAACP, he built the Florida segment of that to 10,000 members in 63 branches. Now in 1949, four young black men were accused of raping a white woman. Of course, things got ugly and even the National Guard had to be called in. Now, Harry Moore was not going to sit by and watch these black boys' lives be sentenced to death without a fair trial. This was known as the Groveland rape case. You should definitely, in your personal deep dive, check out some of the details. You'd be surprised to know how much of it resembles so much of the police brutality today. Well, maybe not surprised, but I'll tell you this one little snippet. Two of the four defendants, two of these two young black boys were traveling in the police vehicle of Sheriff Willis McCall of Lake County. They were on their way to the pretrial when Sheriff McCall shot them and killed them. Now he said it was in self-defense because they tried to escape and they tried to attack him, mind you. All of this while they were handcuffed. Moore called for the suspension of Sheriff McCall and well, six weeks later, Moore's family paid the price for that with their lives. This beautiful song I sang in college was written to describe the unfortunate death of Harry T. Moore. 
It seems I hear every morn from the earth his voice still cries. No bomb can kill the dreams I hold for freedom never dies. Freedom never dies, I say. Freedom never dies. No bomb can kill the dreams I hold for freedom never dies. It happened in Florida, the land of flowers. It was on a Christmas night. Men came stealing through the orange groves, men of hate carrying dynamite. It was to a little cottage, the family the name of Moore. At the window hung sprigs of holly, a fine wreath at the door. It was on a Christmas evening, and the family prayers were said. Mother, father, daughter, and grandmother went to bed. The father's name was Harry Moore of the NAACP. He fought for rights for us to live. Black folk must be free. It could not be in Jesus' name beneath the bedroom floor. On Christmas night, the killers hid the bomb for Harry Moore. It could not be in Jesus' name. The killers took his life and blew his home to pieces and killed his faithful wife. It could not be for the sake of love they did this awful thing. But when the bomb exploded and the moors died, no hearts were heard to sing. And certainly no angels cried, peace on earth, goodwill to men. But round the world an echo hurled the question, when, when, when? When will people in Jesus' name, and when will they by prayer, know that each one has the right to stand up everywhere? And when will people, for the sake of peace, the sake of democracy, know that no bomb you can make can stop us from being free? So if you see our Harry Moore walking on a Christmas night, don't you fear and run and hide, he has no dynamite. For in his heart is only love for all the human race. All he wants is for each of us to have our rightful place. And this he says, our Harry Moore, as from the grave he cries, no bomb can kill the dreams I hold, for freedom never dies. Freedom never dies, I say, freedom never dies. No bomb can kill the dreams I hold, for freedom never dies. Harry Moore was the first NAACP official killed during the civil rights. And he and his wife are the only husband and wife to give their lives for the movement. Despite a so-called extensive FBI investigation, the murders have never been solved. Until next time, remember, you are beautiful, you are special, your smile is amazing. And don't let anyone or anything ever make you feel less than who and what God has designed you to be. Annie's crew, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Bye for now. Annie's Blue Couch.